right now it's not even going into any gear. No gears. It's not moving at all, huh? Chances of come back out or what? Gears up a little bit to the left more. When you that one stops in the middle, this one stops a little bit slightly to the left past the middle. Why does that happen though? What do you think? Shit, I don't know. How did Mitsubishi go from making some of the most legendary cars of the 80s and 90s to making some of the most boring cars on the road? The arrival of the Evo 8 came just after the height of the company's U.S. success. I'm honestly kind of nervous on how they're going to feel about the DSM. What did you think? This thing's insane, dude. Is it? How was it? Be honest. It's sick. <laughs> I didn't expect to love this car so much. <laughs> It rubs a little bit. <laughs> it definitely does. All right, we just pulled up to D Sport. Stereo. God damn. Car won't go or what? And wait for the black one. Yeah, I guess the black one's gonna go on. Hi. <laughs> I got a pack of people, dude. Huh? Look at all these people. Woo! Get it, Sam, get it. So we just got Angel's uh, Evo tuned a couple days ago and uh, he was so nervous but at least he had everyone there to kind of support him and that's one thing I realized is when you go dyno tune your car, I always like having friends there just for emotional support because it's nerve wracking dude because what if it blows up, like he was scared that it was going to blow up, he made 800 horsepower, it was insane, it made a lot of torque as well, I forgot the number but uh, it really motivated me to finish my Evo, uh, we're almost there. Uh, you know, it's just part of building a car is there's always little details that are missing and you kind of have to figure out all the little kinks and situations to kind of get you to the point to where it finally runs, right? So we are on the way to King Guys Motorsports in Montevideo, which is Angel's shop. 
uh, to make a little bit more progress on my Evo and I'm super excited. We're gonna be doing some cutting, some welding. We're gonna try to progress as much as possible. And uh, also I'm super excited to announce that we are going to be taking the Eclipse to LA tomorrow up a canyon with a donut media. So if you don't know who donut media is, uh, it's a pretty big channel and they want the eclipse there so i invited angel to go with me as well and honestly i'll be honest with you, you guys my youtube people because uh, i consider you guys probably the best people i like to conversate with just because i know you guys are actually watching the videos for an extended period of time and you guys are watching the channel consistently is life lately has been crazy and uh, i'm very proud of the miguel that started a youtube channel because starting a youtube channel for me has been probably the best decision i've ever made in my life and uh, the first four or five years that I was doing it, I was very, I had a lot of self doubt and uh, I didn't know if it was gonna work out, but I, I managed to stay consistent uh, with weekly uploads and I've been, I managed to build up, you know, up to the 90,000 subscribers that we're at now, which is not a lot and it's just a number, but I did post on Instagram and I was like, although it's a number, it represents hard work, consistency, Delayed gratification and the ability to develop some sort of internal belief within yourself, which basically means no one else is going to believe in you unless you do. And then once people realize that you do believe in yourself and they see some sort of progress is when they're gonna support you. So companies, brands, people, friends, they see what I'm doing and I know, I know that it's like, it's, it's almost contagious because people see that you have some sort of purpose and you're moving towards a goal or an objective and they wanna be part of that. So. For anyone wanting to do the social media stuff, I highly recommend it, man. The creator economy is still fresh. I was actually considering doing like, not one-on-one -on -one coaching, but it's like maybe like just like a select group of like 10 to 15 videos where I'm sitting in front of the camera for like 30 minutes straight, kind of talking about how I did it and how I managed to kind of have brands sponsor me, uh, get free parts, build cars for a living, right? So it's not easy. I, I feel like a lot of people are trying to do it now, but I see a lot of people doing it for the wrong reasons or just doing it wrong, period. Uh, so someone that's been doing YouTube for six years, I, I'm pretty sure I have the knowledge to kind of show you guys what I'm doing and uh, how to edit. How to, it's just, there's so much that goes into it. And I, I don't want to make specific videos on my YouTube channel because it's based around cars. But if you guys are interested, let me know in the comment section. It's something that I'm willing to do just separately aside from the channel. I'm just grateful. I think that's the biggest thing is just being grateful and uh, and yeah, so um, let's get to the shop. Let's see how much we could progress and uh, let's keep it going. That's an FTO, what the heck? <laughs> So here we have the exhaust dump tube that's gonna come off the hood. As you guys can see, it's basically touching the radiator hose. So I know we can cut it and make it sit way closer to this side. For safety reason, we don't wanna blow this out and overheat the car. And then besides that, I also have to go ahead and get the blow valve and intercooler piping because we're gonna go ahead and get that welded. And honestly, I'm probably gonna go and hit up uh, Jet Hot again because we're most likely gonna end up needing um, to get this recoated with our ceramic coating just to make sure that everything's clean again. And I'm actually considering keeping this silver but going ahead and changing the color on the uh, dump tube. So uh, they're silver. I'm not honestly a fan of the contrast with the bronze. I think if it's all one color, it will flow a lot better. And then if we have the piping right here, it won't, it'll look normal. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and send that out. Uh, in the near future, but uh, let's head out to the welder shop, drop some stuff off, and uh, see what happens. Right here. So I think we should do like one and a half, one and a half inches. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we just dropped off the exhaust dump tube and the intercooler piping. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and cut, do some tack welding, and then take it to the shop later to kind of. Uh, just make sure that everything's good before we weld it and uh, we're for sure gonna have to send them out to get recoded because he's gonna have to grind off a bunch of the ceramic coating from Jaha anyway so back at the shop got a couple parts out that we're gonna be doing today uh, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the AEM boost controller setup on the harness itself so the ohm bracing harness already comes with a plug that basically has the boost controller go straight to the ECU so that's a plus and then uh, from there, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the slave on. We got the lower radiator hose, we have the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, we still have fluids to do, so we have the ACV uh, fluid and then we have the uh, transfer case fluid as well. So 
Um, besides that, there's not much left, guys. It's almost done. So, uh, number two on the boost controller goes on this one, and then number one gets split between the turbo and one of the ports on the wastegate. Alright, climb down the lower hose. Yeah, still way too close. Yeah. We got like a good like two fingers. Two fingers like this? Yeah. Okay. Two yeah, finger I gap. Think, I, think, I think that works. You guys think? Is that enough of a gap? Yeah, I think that should work honestly a lot better. Alright, so. I'll go tack it, I'll be back. Okay. okay. Alright, so. Up next, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the sleeve so. What the uh -huh. fuck you wanna record so me for? Okay, one the house. It's so Cal Beaner right here. <laughs> so Cal Beaner. <laughs> How do you focus it? I think it's taking it back off. It's not moving at all. Huh? It needs to be on that side. Yeah. It should be like, let's see. Yeah. So when it pushes, it's like this. Chances of come back out or what? Alright, he's gonna check on the uh, ACT monolock. Sure everything's good and hopefully we don't have to pop this transmission back out. But she's like just chilling in the car, under the car sometimes. Feels great or what? It's not budging at all. Alright, we're gonna double check the intro setup. Yeah, it doesn't stay, it goes back. And it goes to the middle when it goes back though, right? Yeah. Because I think yours is offset. It needs to go to the middle when it's not pressed. Yours is a little bit to the left more. Yeah. When you, that one stops in the middle. This one stops a little bit slightly to the left, past the middle. Why does that happen though? What do you think? Shit, I don't know. Let it go? Yeah. Oh, there. Oh. Nah. It was. It went back. But it went back after he let yeah. go. Yeah, it stayed there for a bit. But, uh, what is it, the fork? No, no. Hi, hi, Scott. Piping came in. Where's this go? Don't step on my boy down there, right? <laughs> I step on. Fuck yeah. Damn. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and slap on the slave. We're gonna go ahead and bleed the clutch and then see what happens. No, si el viene those fingers. Oh uh, yeah, check it out. It's not working. It's not working. You a plumber or what? Chiquita Only at plumber. night. Oh, yeah. this one, fool. Let's bleed it. So, slave is on. Fluid's topped off. We're going to start bleeding the clutch. So right now, it's not even going into any gear. No gears. Hold. Hold. Because uh, this one stretch all the way. So, if, so, so when you're pumping it, it's barely tapping the, yeah, uh, the it's piston. Stretched. The so it's barely like yeah. giving it any play. So, yeah, we need to put that shit in place. Oh man, it's looking like we're going to have to pull a trance. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, Ask a couple of buddies about what they think about the situation. Uh, you would write down in the comments, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna figure this out before the video's out. We have the Donut Media shoot tomorrow that they're gonna be doing. And they want both this Evo and my DSM. So, catch you guys tomorrow. And uh, it happens, part of the game. We gotta pull the trans, we gotta pull it, and uh, just puts us back quite a bit, but it's all good. We're still waiting for parts. Stuff's gonna have to get welded, stuff's gonna have to get recoded. I gotta wait for some lines for the power steering, lines for the turbo feed, lines for the turbo return, and then we're gonna have to do something custom for this set of the front mount as we switch the turbo setup. So, catch you guys mañana.
Presley in his pack. Look at that. Made it to the E85 station. We got Angel already gassed up. And, uh, we're about to start heading out to the Topanga Lookout. It's called like Stunt Road or something like that with the Donut Media team. And uh, man, these look good together. So it's a two hour drive for 55 miles because we're straight up in LA now. So gotta love California sometimes. cross up here I guess we're gonna be doing a video on Mitsubishi's downfall so <laughs> stay tuned for that how did Mitsubishi go from making some of the most legendary cars in the 80s and 90s to making some of the most boring cars on the road well today the arrival of the Evo 8 came just after the height of the company's US success and could have been they're gonna get some rolling shots of the Evo 3. This guy's going way too fast. God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel with someone driving your car? Oh, man, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know man. I'm honestly kind of nervous on how they're going to feel about the DSM because one, this is more of like an aesthetic fitment, it's not exactly functional. So under really, really hard cornering, I tend to rub in the rear. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of excited to see what they think of the 2G DSM. But this just goes to show uh, what Mitsubishi used to be and kind of what it turned into. So. Of course, this thing gets a lot of hate, but I'm sure it has its pluses. I just wish I didn't name it the Eclipse. Quick little walk around, just looks like a regular SUV. Nothing related to the Eclipse in my opinion. No way. Yeah, it's a 4B40. It looks so tiny. <laughs> Is it all-wheel drive four-cylinder? Yeah. Yeah, all-wheel drive. I can't believe how slow it is then. Oh, yeah. It's what, a 2.0? It's probably the green. Sure. A little displacement, yeah. What did you think? This thing's insane. Dude. Is it? Crazy. <laughs> this is one of the craziest cars I've ever driven. Hell yeah. Just like when that boost comes on, it's just like... <laughs> oh yeah. yeah I'm telling you, as a cruiser, it's really good because it's not a boost, but when it is, it's like, damn. It's so hot. No power steering life. <laughs> How was it? Be honest. It's sick. <laughs> I didn't expect to love this car so much. <laughs> it rubs a little bit. <laughs> it definitely does. All right, guys. So the Dota Media shoot is pretty much over. I'm gonna go ahead and link the video in the video description. Uh, once it's out, I think it's late October, so I'll keep you guys updated. But uh. Shout out to the Donut Media team. Shout out to uh, Nolan and Jimmy and uh, 
uh, they love the car, so stay tuned for that. Um, as far as the Evo, uh, we're probably going to have to pull the transmission back out, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this video, so like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.